tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. In a moment, Act One of The Sin Eater, written especially for suspense by Bob Corcoran. This first portion of suspense is brought to you by the makers of Parliament Cigarettes. Extra margin. Yes, extra margin. Smoke after smoke, recessed filter Parliament is the cigarette that gives you an extra margin. Every Parliament gives you extra margin. The filter's recessed and made to stay a neat, clean, quarter inch away. Parliament gives you extra margin. You're smoking neat, you're smoking clean with Parliament today. After him, rare enough sudden like striking a man down. You just gonna sit there reading of the book? How is he, Ma? Same as he was, Jesse. So near being dead, I swear he slips across the Black River, and then his terrible fear brings him back again. Luther, I asked you, you just gonna sit there? I figure praying for him ain't just sitting here. Praying ain't no good for him, and you ought to know it. What you expect me to do? I expect you to let him die. He knowed what he is doing all these years. You can't put it on me. Now, when it's time to pay... Don't him... talk so. He's got the burden, not you. He's looking to lay in the ground while his soul walks in torment through the great gray world for all eternity. Or burns in hellfires of damnation. His pain's so terrible, fierce. I see it staring out of his eyes like an animal in a trap. Death would be a mercy for any man. But he can't let himself die. Not yet, not like he is. Each of us owes God a debt. And no man can pay for somebody else. If only Isaac was here, he'd know what to do. Isaac ain't one of us no more. He went down the mountain. He went forth from Gilead. Left us and our ways behind him. We was to ask Isaac for help. He just spout the law at us ever which ways. Got to do it ourselves. Got to do it right now. Do what? You got to go some other ways. You and Jesse here. What for, Ma? What are me and Pa supposed to do? You'll fetch someone. So's your grandpa can die. Someone ain't afeard like other folks around here. Someone ain't kin, so we'll let him do it. But who? Who are we to fetch? I don't care who. Someone, anyone, who can take his heavy burden. Well, what if we don't find someone? You got to. Jesse's most a growed man. Between you, you fetch someone. Well, what if they don't want to come? Make them. Isn't it, Lucille? If I... To that eye of the beholder line. Oh. oh. Now I know what they mean by God forsaken. Too bad the scenery doesn't include some attentive young men. Oh, don't start that again. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Well, I'm just a jealous old man with a young and too beautiful wife. And a vivid imagination. You're quite right. This will be good for both of us. Weak among these hills, among simple people, away from all the strains of... Oh, 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 you know, I became a teacher because I thought it would be the, the peaceful life. I guess we both got fooled. Oh, now, what's the matter with him? He has more than enough room to pass. It's a police car. Well, why is he waving me to stop? I wasn't speeding. Maybe he wants your autograph. He was smiling. Howdy. Well, good afternoon. Anything wrong, officer? I'm sure I wasn't going too fast. No, sir. I just wanted to check. Was you all right? Not lost or nothing. And not many cars ever use this here back road. Oh, I see. Well, no. No, we're not lost. Uh, just taking a drive through these hills... 
My name is Reed. Uh, this is my wife. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Reed. And you, ma'am. Hello. Uh, kind of dangerous, but the road's not so good. Are the natives friendly? Uh, yes, ma'am. I come from around here myself. <laughs> I can see that you're friendly. Can't you, James? My wife has a quaint sense of humor, officer. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, are there any uh, communities near here? Communities? Nests of natives, unspoiled and undiscovered. Oh, you see, officer, my husband is a specialist in folk music, ballads, that sort of thing. He's still hoping to come across some tunes that Carl Sandburg missed. That's so, ma'am? Foreigners. Isn't that what you call us? Yes, sir. As far as you, Mr. Reed, I'd keep right on driving along. Headed right like you should bring you into Pyree. That's the next town. Bit after dark. It's where I'm headed now. <laughs> you make it all sound dangerous, officer. Don't you think you'd better drive along and protect us? It's an easy thing to scoff, ma'am, when the sun's shining. You take my advice, Mr. Reed, and drive right on into Pyree. Uh, I don't recollect ever hearing any ballad songs like you say around here. Oh, well, uh, thank you, officer. We'll do that. Bye. You figure they seen us, Paul? Of course not. Can't no one see us. Boy, this tree comes down. <laughs> We got us a perfect hide hole, ain't we? Mm, she's sure pretty, ain't she, Paul? The way the sun slants off her hair, sort of like gold. Jezebel, all that pain on her face. Come on, let's go. We gonna fetch him, Paul? We gonna fetch one of them into hell. There's no need for you to be beholden to me. Me and Jesse here admire to take you folks. Oh, well, they say it's just back in the hills a bit. Yep, just short piece. Old Granny Seaman, she's always singing them things. Uh, what'd you call them? Uh, ballads. Yeah, that's it. I know she'd be proud to sing them for you. And you say no one else, uh, like us, I mean, ever came here to hear her? No, sir, we're sort of out of the way, you might say. This will be one in Carl Sandberg's eye. Um, uh, does your friend talk? Ain't my friend, ma'am. He's my boy, Jesse. He talks real good when he's a mind to. Is that so, Jesse? Well, now you're going to start on that boy. Boy? <laughs> he's taller than his father. Now leave him alone. Of course. What do you take me for? <laughs> Reminds me of that officer. But better looking. I can't see a thing except this road and precious little of that. Now, let's go back. What's the matter? Oh, I don't like it. That's what's the matter. Where are they taking us? For all you know, they could be getting ready to shove us off a cliff. Oh, please. An officer knew what he was talking about, the sunset, and it's not so easy to scoff. All right, I'm scared. I admit it. Now, will you turn around, please? Well, well, you are frightened. Of course, my dear. Something wrong? Uh, my wife doesn't feel well. I'm afraid we'll have to turn back and put off our visit till another time. It's only a little piece further. I'm sure it is, but you'll have to forgive us. Thank you for your kindness. You come all this way, seems a shame to stop uh, now. Yes, but my wife... She looks fine to me. However she may look, she doesn't feel... Now, now, really, there's little point in talking about this. If you'll move your mule aside so I can turn around. Didn't you hear what I said? We heard, mister. Well, get out of the way. I don't want to hurt that animal. Nobody's hurting nothing. Listen, you make me. <gasps> now, this scattergun says that you do like I say. Now, now please, we... Get out of that car. Well, what if we refuse? You, you can't kidnap us like this. We'll be missed. Yes, yes, a police officer was talking to us just before... He won't we... bother us none. You won't be the first that's disappeared in these hills. Hey, you come along right now, like we say. We won't hurt you none. Nothing will. Nothing. That's in this world. Oh, I can't 
walk another step. We gotta keep up with him. It's just over that rise ahead. Well, you, you seem like a, a nice boy. Ain't a boy, I'm a man. Yes, well, I can see that. Let me lean on your arm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's better. You won't let anything happen to me. Say you won't. I'm young. You know how that is, don't you? Well, it's different with my husband. It... Oh, won't you tell me what it is? How come you married an old man like that? Promise me you'll protect me. Will you promise me? Hurry up, Jesse. I, I promise. <laughs> That hole. In the hole, it's a grave. Get on up here, Jesse. Time's almost run out. Huh. Real fancy, lady. Where's my husband? Bold as brass, ain't you? Maybe we'll change that. Come in the house, Missy. Oh, don't be afraid, Lucille. What do they want? All right. You force us here against our wills. Why? You ever hear tell First, of First, a... we let him know we got someone. Let him rest easy. Let him pick the one he wants it to be, so he can die. What is she talking easy. about? Easy. In here. Grandpa? Grandpa? Maybe we're too late. No. See his hands move in, and fingers... Grandpa? Ah, oh, that's right. You have... Open your eyes. Everything's all right. All right, see? Luther and Jesse got someone. Hold up the lamp so he can see him, Jesse. See, Grandpa? I can't stand it. Come here. Which will it be, Grandpa? You show us, and that one it'll be, I promised you. <laughs> then you can drop off nice and easy and peaceful. Make a sign, Grandpa. The man, the woman. The woman looks like it wouldn't make much of a never mind of her. <laughs> the man, he's pointing to the man. So be it. It's all over. He's dead. May the good Lord have mercy on his soul. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, <clears throat> perhaps you'll tell us what you want me for. Yep. Us folks through these hills come from Wales. Least ways our old folks did. And they brought certain ways with them. Ways that seem strange to others. You ever hear tell of Sin eaten? Well, it's uh, some kind of superstition, isn't it? In this hill, hills, it's a belief. It's true, just as true as sin. It's one way sure a person can go certain to heaven. It's this way. A person goes sure to heaven by having all the sins he's been guilty of transferred to somebody else willing to have them. And that someone is the sin eater? You're wise not to mock. That person is a sin eater. At a death, the corpse is brought out of the house and laid on a bier. Then a piece of bread is brought out and delivered to the sin eater across the corpse, and he eats it. Then a bowl of ale, which the sin eater drinks off in a draft, after which he is given a bit of silver money. Then and there, he takes on himself all the sins of the dead and freed him of them from walking the wide world or burning in hell. And that old man in there, he was one of these sin eaters? Longer than anyone around here can remember. And this is what you dragged us here for? <laughs> this is what he's supposed to do? <laughs> Eat bread and drink ale and take on the sins that the old man was afraid to die with. Lucille, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's a fiat, I reckon. She's got a right to be. She's 
come so close to having sins done days and years before she was born waited onto her soul. It was too much for the old man when time came. That's why we had to get you. So he could die knowing he'd be free of them because of sin eater who'd come after. But what if I refuse? Refuse? You've seen that grave out yonder. That'll hold both of you. If you don't hold Grandpa, she had to be sins. Of course he'll do it. Now, tell them you will. The wages of sin is death. You offer me death. Either way. Of all the ridiculous mumbo-jumbo I ever heard of, I mean, after Freud and his friends, who believes in sin and eating them? <laughs> These hillbillies are just too much. Jim? Jim, are you listening to me? Jim? Uh-huh. Look, look, Lucille, I, I, I must get away somehow. I don't care what you say, or, or I, I, I won't take, I won't take the slime from that old man, the, the foulness, the filth. Perhaps if, if I was younger or stronger, if I knew less or more, I, look, I'm going to try to run into the trees, and then I'll... Uh, no, now, he's watching, he's got the gun. When he, and if you got away, he, what about me? He likes you, he likes you, I saw it. Just like all the other strong young men. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Lucille. I, I didn't mean that, but please, please talk to him, will you? Ask him to let us go. He won't. Well, try. Try. For God's sake, try. All right. I'll try. You poor old man. Jesse? I want to talk to you. What do you want, miss? Oh, just want to talk to you. <laughs> I bet all the girls around here like to do that. Don't they, Jesse? You got no gals around here. These ways not grow ones. Like me. <laughs> I, I never seed one like you. Go hair, smell like flowers. <laughs> Jesse, you like me, don't you? I like you. Reckon I do. You make me feel <laughs> fun is all I know. Different. Jesse, let us get away. My husband and me. Now before the others come out. That's what the sweet talking's for. So you you and him can run. Well, if I was alone, I wouldn't want to leave. But look at him. Poor old man, you see? He's afraid. He'd ought to be afraid with what he's going to do. But I'm going to make sure he does. Your grandfather died happy. That's the main thing, isn't it? Don't care if and he was happy or not. I hated him. Just a mean old man full of sin. Then let us go. No. Ma feels different about him. He was her pa. Besides the time them sins was got out of here, one way or t'other. Would you want me to be a sin eater? Of course not. You heard me talk up in there for you. But don't you see? When we're gone from here... My husband will force me to take them away from him. Just the way you mean to do it now. Please let us go so he won't force me later. You could come to Pyrie then. I'd wait for you. You and I could... Jesse, it's time. Come lend a hand. Please, Jesse. Don't you worry now, man. Stand over the corpse. No, do like she says. I, I won't. You can't make me. You do it. Now, you just stand up here nice like. She told me how you treat her. Don't hit me again. Don't hit me. Eat this piece of bread. Yeah, yeah. You'll... Drink this here ale. You'll let us go, but... Now, take this here silver quarter. Take it. You earned it. Put it in your pocket. Now repeat after me. For these things given me. Say like she said. Huh? Yes. Yes. For these things given me. 
I take on all the sins. I take on all the sins. Of this soul departed. Of this soul departed. So help me God. So, so help me God. Leave him alone, woman. He just fainted. Get in the house. Come morning, we'll take you down the mountain. Take care of him, Jesse. Me and Ma will take care of your grandpa. He is at peace now. Where's my husband? Outside, if you want him. <sighs> Jim? Jim! Don't need to be afraid, ma'am. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. <clears throat> Where's my husband? Jim! Jim! He can't hear you, ma'am. Well, you'd have shot through the wide world. What? I said I'd protect you. What? Why are you digging? Grandpa's grave's already used, making him another. No. You'll like it here. Peaceful and quiet. With me. <laughs> you, you like me. Said so in the moonlight. I, I asked Ma, and, well, she said we can have Grandpa's room. Stay with you? He? You said you'd wait for me and Pyrie here or there. What's the difference? Hello? All them sins safe underground where they can't ever hurt you. Hello? Uh, hold on, it's Isaac. Help! Help, officer. He, he killed my husband. They brought us here. He wants to make me stay. Easy, ma'am, easy. Thank God you've come. Well, when you didn't show up in Pyrie, I come back to see. It wasn't but one turn off, so as I found your car, easy. Arrest him, officer. And there's another one. His father. Kidnapping and murder. What in tongue control the hollering back? Look out. W what do you want around here? Oh, I'm just listening to Miss Reed here. Don't pay her no never mind. Well, she was saying. Don't talk. Arrest. You hear that? She wants me to arrest you and Jesse, Pa. Pa? Well, what for, son? Oh, well, says you kidnap her and kill her husband. She's a liar. She come here to live with Jesse. The police will come. They'll find me. I'm the police, ma'am. I'm also kin to these folks. Seems like I'll be kin to you. My brother Jesse will do right by you. No. Appears like you wandered into the wrong nest of natives, don't it, ma'am? Suspense. You've been listening to The Sin Eater, written especially for Suspense by Bob Corcoran. So long. Have a nice trip. Don't forget your phone. Planning your vacation or a weekend trip? Well, long distance can be a big help. You decide where you want to go, then just pick up your phone and call ahead for reservations. Make sure of a good place to stay. And while you're away, it's so easy to keep in touch with home by telephone. Well, have a good trip, and don't forget the phone. is produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Heard in tonight's story were Jim Bowles, Ethel Everett, Herb Duncan, Ivor Francis, Rita Lloyd, Doug Parkhurst, and Guy Rep. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. This is Stuart Met speaking. Listen again next week when we return with Snow on 66, written by William N. Robeson. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense.